Welcome to the Atlas Virtual Tour. I am Kevin Warner, a research and development engineer here at Ipsen. Today I'm going to take you on a walk around to show you the furnace and some of its components and features. Here we are located at the rear of the heating chamber. First thing we can look at is the stiff back chain that is mounted vertically going upwards to save floor space underneath. Just next to the chain is where a heavy duty gear motor is located. This allows you to push a 3,500 pound load in and out of the heating chamber. Mounted directly on the shaft on the other side is our encoder. The encoder allows us to get repeatable positions when moving the load. Inside the chamber where the chain is located, we have an access port which allows you to open it up to view to make sure that the chain is functioning properly. Above the chain, there are a total of two thermocouples located on the right side. Next to this is a carbon sensor. And at the very end is a shim stock port. The shim stock port has a side gas sampling system. Connected to the carbon sensor, you will see the fast recovery solenoid located over here. This allows atmosphere to flow to the carbon sensor as well as vent out to recondition the probe as needed. Next to that is our viewport. This allows you to see where the load is at all times. Next we will move over to the side of the furnace to see what things are located over there. Here we are on the right side of the furnace. Located on the very end is a digital manometer. This allows you to record static pressure in the heating chamber. Here we are with the process gas system. First, located on top, is the nitrogen line shown in green. Below that is the endothermic line shown in orange. And below that is our air line shown in blue. And last, we have our natural gas line shown in yellow. Below this is an additional natural gas line which operates our burners. Each line has an analog flow display. Our endothermic line, as well as our natural gas lines, all have proof of closure safety valves. Also located on the panel is a leak test for our burners, which can be operated by push buttons. Not shown on the process gas system is an ammonia optional line, which would be located above the nitrogen in the color of purple. Our endothermic, our air, and our natural gas line all get combined in to our process gas pipe located on the right side of the panel in the color of white. This pipe is routed to the top of the furnace where it is injected. Next, we will go to the top of the furnace to see where that is located. Here we are on top of the heating chamber. First, you will see the process gas piping, colored in white, entering directly into the top of the heating chamber. This is injected very close to the heat fan. Next, you will see the yellow piping, which is our combustion gas. It is connected to the burner by a flexible stainless steel hose. On the other side, you will see a regenerative blower, which provides clean air to our combustion air manifold. This manifold is identified by blue, and you can see how it's connected to the burner by a flexible stainless steel hose. 
both hoses, after going into the burner, come, the gas comes out through an exhaust located at the rear of the burner. This exhaust is then piped by customers at their own facility. Last, you will see the heat fan assembly. This is a VFD motor and can be easily taken apart by simply removing a few clamps. Next, we will head back down to look at some components that are on the quench tank. Here we are on the right side of the quench tank. Located towards the rear is our oil overflow, which is mechanically operated. Next, you will see insulation that is covered by panels that surround the entire quench tank. Located here in gray is one of five junction boxes. Each junction box has quick connects that also have condensed wiring throughout the entire system. You will also see two VFD vertically mounted agitators, which maximizes our turbo quench. Our turbo quench is an Ipsen design baffling system that maximizes the quenching performance. On the outside of that, you will see four vertically mounted heaters on both sides of the furnace for a total of eight to improve uniformity. Towards the front of the quench tank, there is an oil level switch as well as an overtemp. Located on the front of it, you will see a manually operated push button station where you can operate things such as doors as well as chains. Here you will see a pneumatic manifold which also has a lockout tagout valve. Above the manifold, you will see our main exhaust, which will be ducted through the customer's facility. And above the exhaust, you will see what we will talk about next, which is the oil cooler. Located on top of the furnace, you will see the oil cooler. The pump used to operate the oil cooler is located at the rear of the quench tank, mounted vertically. When looking at the front of the furnace, you will see the front door, which has two options, electric and pneumatic. As you can see shown, it is an electric door. Below the door, you will see a flame curtain which is intermittent only when the door is open. Inside of the quench tank, you will see our rack, which is operated by two cylinders that can lift a 3,500 pound load. An additional load can be placed in if the load is in the quench tank or if it is located on top with our top cool option. So next, let's dive in to the heating chamber. First, you will see a fiber insulated inner door with limit switch interlocks for open and closed positions. Next, located on the top of the heating chamber is the VFD driven alloy fan. Located around the fan, you will see eight standard alloy cert single-ended radiant tubes with an option to go to 10. There are brick lined walls and floor with fiber insulation on the ceiling. Open ceramic chain guide with a stiff back chain minimizing warpage and lengthening the life of the channel. And lastly, fully supported, heavy duty, 
alloy roller rails and rollers with brickwork completely lined under the supports. Here we are on the left side of the furnace where the control panel is placed. Located on the right side of the panel, you will see a rotary disconnect, temperature controls, burner control units, and on the left side of the control panel, you will see a manual operations, an interface port, an air conditioning unit, as well as our operator interface, which has Ipsen's CarboProf software. This is a leading software in carburizing processes. You can do things such as creating new recipes, simulating processes, as well as archiving data. Next, we will look at the Ipsen Atlas loader. It's a single chain push pill mechanism and also has the ability to integrate with your entire Atlas line. First, we will look at the controls for the loader. Here, you will see a cycle status light. When the color is red, there is a fault. Amber, it is in hold. And green, for when the cycle is running. This is a four-way joystick, which allows you to move the loader forward, in reverse, as well as move the chain left, as well as right. Next to it is the on-station light, which identifies if you're in front of one of the units. Above is your emergency stop as well as your emergency stop reset. Located here is your chain extension toggle switch, which allows you to go a short distance as well as a long distance. Next to it is the cross transfer speed for the loader, both slow and fast. Below is the able to transfer light to confirm your chain is in the home position. And last is the safety switch, which makes the user have the button depressed when operating the loader and moving it forward or reverse. The loader has two speeds, fast and slow. The fast speed is used when going from unit to unit. Putting the toggle switch into the right segment Pressing the button on the safety switch and moving the toggle switch forward allows you to go fast. Once you're close to your unit, you would like to go into a slow speed to be more fine-tuned in front. Switching your toggle switch to the left, pressing the safety button, and moving the toggle switch allows you to do so. Once you're in position, you're able to move the load in and out of your unit. The loader is equipped with two safety bumpers located on both ends, which shuts power to the unit when coming in contact with anything.
The loader is designed to move a 3,500 maximum pound load. With the load in the pickup position inside the quench vestibule, the heat zone chain extends and engages the load to pull it into the heat zone. After a heating cycle is complete, the heat zone chain will push the load out of the heat zone and onto the quench rack. Transitioning from pushing to pulling is accomplished by a mechanical trip mechanism activated by the operator. After the quench cycle, is complete, the loader is ready to remove the load from the quench chamber. That concludes our Atlas virtual tour. For more information, please visit our website or contact your Ibsen representative today.